Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on simplifying Java for OOP1 students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn Java. This is part 9 in this series and is entitled Java Looping Statements Part 2. For activity number 14, we will create a Java class that will ask a user to enter an integer. We will compute and display its factorial. The factorial of a number is the continuous multiplication from that number to 1. For example, the factorial of 4 is 4 times 3, 12, times 2, 24, times 1 is equal to 24. We only have one input and we will assign it with variable num. Looking at the process of getting the factorial, using 5 as an example, we can see that the numbers from 5 to 1 is a good counter because it is decreasing and has a pattern of reducing its value by 1. We will call it CTR. Let's not forget that the starting value of our counter is the num variable. Notice that computing the new factorial involves the value of the old factorial multiplied by our counter. This statement can be rewritten in a shorter form by the factorial times equals CTR. To start our program, we first have to initialize the value of factorial to 1 then we can use the for statement. The initial value of our counter CTR is the num value. Our condition is that we will do it while CTR is greater than or equal to 1. And it will be a decrement operation for our counter. We only have one statement and that is the factorial will be equal to factorial times CTR. Our output will be the factorial. Let's call our class factorial. This time, let's use J option pane for both input and display. We have to declare three variables, all of type integer, the num, our counter CTR, and factorial, which we can already initialize here as one. Let's ask the user to enter the num. For our process, we will use our for looping statement. The initial value of CTR is num. Our condition is that CTR is greater than or equal to 1. And it will be the decrement operation for our counter. We only have one statement inside the looping statement. And that is the factorial is equal to the factorial times CTR. We can now display our output using J option pin. Show message dialog. We'll see that the factorial of num is factorial. And lastly, don't forget system that exit 0. Let's run our program. For an input of 5, the factorial of 5 is 120. Well done. For activity number 15, we will create a Java class that will ask for input until a 0 value is entered. We will calculate the sum of only even numbers. This means that the looping of the statements will not be dependent on a counter. Instead, it will depend on the input of a user. While the input is not a zero, it will continuously repeat the statements. Although the user can enter as many numbers as he wants, we need only one variable to hold them all, one at a time, and we will call it n. We will use a while looping statement, and the condition is that n is not equal to zero. So that means before the looping statement, we have to make sure that the value of n is anything but 0. Inside the loop, we have to ask the user for a value of n. 
we're going to get the sum of only even numbers. So we have to test if the number is really even by using the if statement and the modulo division. If it is an even number, then we have to accumulate it using the variable sum. But we have to be sure that before the looping statement, we have already initialized the value of sum to zero. At the end, our output is the sum. Let's call our project sum of even numbers. Let's use J option again for this activity. Let's declare two integer variables, n, which can be initialized to any number except 0, and sum, which should be initialized to 0. Let's write our process using the while loop. The condition is that n is not equal to 0. Now we can ask for input from the user. using J option pin. Now let's test if N is even. And if it is is, then sum is equal to sum plus n. Now we can display the result. The sum is sum. And don't forget system that exit 0. Let's run our project. Let's enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. The sum is 20. So if you add 2, 4, 6, and 8, the sum is 20. Let's finish it off with activity number 16 by revising our last program by using do while instead of while. So we'll still have the same input and instead of while we will start the loop with the do reserve word. We will do the same things but the while will be at the end. Notice also here that we don't have to initialize the value of n anymore. Our output is still the sum. So let's revise our program. We don't need to initialize n anymore and this while Brace can be put at the end, so I'll cut it and start it instead with the do reserve word. At the end of the closing brace, we will paste while condition, put the semicolon, and I'll just put a space here. That's it. We can run our program. Let's try the same inputs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0 and the sum is 20. Good job! We will surely still be using looping in our next series, but for now, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama!